Good over there. Praise the, Lord, Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the name of Jesus. Amen. I praise God for, amen, being up here. Uh, I never take it lightly, amen, ever. And uh, so I want to praise God for what he's doing. I want to first praise God real good for the manifestation and the, uh, you know, the display of his power and glory in our sister Anita's life. Amen. On Sunday. Amen. 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 I've been praising God every day for it, and I've been meaning to text or call or something, but uh, I apologize. I want to just touch base with you, but uh, I know the Lord works anyhow. But I praise God because, you know, the Bible says to be ready in and out of season. Amen. Be instant. And so it's one thing to be ready, but it's another thing to be instant. Because I could be ready to go to work, but, I, you know, sometimes you're not instant to go to work. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you're ready. You know, I guess, you know, I can. But you got to be instant. Amen? <laughs> you got to be at, at the drop of a dime. Bam. Be ready to go. And I praise God for it because the Lord gave me something actually on the Axe Fellowship. And uh, I try my best not to do this, but if the Lord gives you something, I pray that you, you do as the word says and write it on the tablet. Amen. Uh, you know, thank God we don't have to use chisels and hammers no more. <laughs> Amen. Get you a nice little pen, ballpoint pen or pencil, and write it on down. Amen. So uh, during the service, this is what the Lord gave me. So I'm just going to read what he gave me, and then we're going to go into what I truly feel that he wants us to, to hear. Amen. So on... On the 7th, this past Saturday, this is what the Lord gave me. It, it, and I put it down verbatim how he gave it to me. Even through, even through our deepest pains. Now, now I want to build the word picture in Jesus' name. The Lord wants to build it. So as I'm speaking, go there with me. Even through our deepest pains. Amen. Our guilts. Our trials. Uh bitterness, etc. Towards God, watch this, and our coming against him and wanting to go back to our old ways or the norm, God still sustained us. So let me reiterate that a little bit. Even at the times where we felt, God, you're doing me wrong, he sustained us. Even when we felt like all hell was breaking loose, he sustained us. Because, again, it's easy for us to, to go back to what we know. Amen? The familiar spirit. Amen. The, you know, misery loves company, that whole thing. It's easy for us to go back to that and say, God, you messed up. And even when we, this is the thing, this is what the Lord gave me. Even though we do that, he still sustains us. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The title the Lord gave me is this. Set your minds on godliness. Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory. Yeah, right. I, 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 I'm trying to contain myself and stay in the subject matter. Hallelujah. Amen. But think about it. To stay in the mindset of godliness, the Bible says this. Men, if we look upon a woman that is not ours and we look at her with lust, we have committed adultery. Amen. That's in the mind. Yes. Amen? Amen? So in order to set your mind toward godliness, when you look at a sister, men, we have to immediately say, that's a daughter of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's my sister in Christ. Right. Or that's my sister to be in Christ. Right. Amen? Because if they're not everybody saved, glory. Right. But we have to look at them in this way. If not, we're committing adultery. Right. Amen? And again, this, this is what the Lord wants us to do. Yeah, hallelujah. So even through our deepest pains, when we're, we're just feeling like our heart is shredded apart, like every beat is just a pain, and every beat is just getting us more and more weary, and we're coming against God, or the man of God, he still sustained us. Amen. None of us has got to that place of glory to say, I'm done. Amen. Maybe in our minds, praise God, but none of us here, glory, have, have ended our carnal life. Amen. Amen? Right. Because he has sustained us. Yeah. Sunday was a display of his glory and his power. 
Amen. Amen. And the Lord gave me a word for an individual, and I, I didn't release it because I got to talk to the pastor about it. You know, everything's timing. You got to make sure your things are right. Always go to the pastor, by the way, to our pastor. Amen. So I, I, I should have told you earlier, but nevertheless. But there's times in our lives where the Lord will do a thing for us, but there's some prerequisites. Amen. And we'll get into that. Now watch this. This is, this is the, he sustained us and God still blesses us beyond measure. And I'll make it relevant to us and I'll give an example in Jesus' name. Malachi, watch this. Malachi who was inspired by God Almighty. Chapter 3. If you read it real good. He was inspired. Hey, well, amen. He was inspired real good by God Almighty to say these things. If you bring your tithes to the storehouse, amen. Uh, so in other words, stop being filthy lucres. Stop being stingy with God's money. Scripture says all gold and silver and everything in heaven and on earth and everything we can see and, and don't see is his. So everything we can make, amen, everything we earn is God's. He makes the currency, amen. He put the amount, what, what that piece of paper is worth. He did that. Amen. All gold, all silver, everything is his. So when, when Malachi was, was, was uh, inspired to write this, he said, if you bring that to the storehouse. So in other words, if you obey the command of God and the judgment and the statutes and the precepts of God, then he will open. This is the scripture now. He will open a window of heaven and pour out a blessing. Watch this. That you cannot even contain. Ain't that the scripture? Now, watch this. Malachi says this, and then he will open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing that you cannot contain. Watch this. Israel, while complaining and murmuring. Now, they started complaining immediately after walking out of Egypt. Egypt was behind them. They were at, you know, at the Red Sea. is about to part. Man, why would you just leave us in Egypt? We could have died there. They get across. Oh, my God, we're hungry. Wait a minute. We just, a miracle just happened. Complaining, murmuring. The Lord brought down manna. They said it tastes like honey. Mm. Beautiful. For a long while, I was hungry. Then he switched it to, taste it to make it taste like oil. Yeah. Olive oil. Amen. But he sustained them, and they complained and murmured. Watch this. Then they continued to complain against God and his appointed leader, Moses, especially when the people complained about not having any meat. Right? They complained and they said, in Egypt. They kept going back to the world, the norm, right. where we were for four centuries. We had it all. We were in bondage. We were being mistreated. But we had it all. Right? We were in sin. We were, we were praising other gods and all this here. But we had it all. You see? And this is what the Lord did. Through their complaining and murmuring, this is what he did for them. He blessed them with quails. So much so, the Bible said it was coming out their nostrils. They couldn't get enough. Amen? So, so, so go back to... To the, to the beginning here, that even through our deepest themes, times where we felt all hope was gone, our, our minds were about to explode because this thing is so heavy on us, the Lord sustained us. Amen? Amen? The point, to the point where we're coming against pastor for no apparent reason. We're coming against ministry for no apparent reason. Or our brother or sister for no apparent reason. God still sustained us. All the while, he's saying, son, daughter, just follow my precepts. Obey my commands. Obey my judgments. Set your mind on godliness. I got 15 scriptures. This is what the Lord gave me. I got 15 scriptures. We're going to go through it how he tells me to. If we need to stop for a minute and explain it better, we will in Jesus' name. Amen? So, And then we're going to go back to the beginning of this because I, I, I really think it needs to sink in. But uh, first scripture, Ephesians 5, 15 through 16. Amen. Uh, my, my beautiful queen, let me know my time, please. Well, not now, but, you know, where I'm at with time. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. Say amen when you have it. Amen. It says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Watch this. Redeeming the time because the days are are evil. Amen? See then that ye walk circumspectly. We have to make sure that we're walking in a way that is 
absolutely, unequivocally in godliness. Amen? I seen a picture the other day. It showed a picture of a club and a picture of a church. And the caption was, how do you know which is which? Wow. That's amazing. You, could, you couldn't tell. The Bible tells me that we have to be, be set apart. That we are a peculiar people. Right? And that people should know by our look that we're different. Amen? This whole thing about, you know, churches with, with black lights and, and fog and all this. I know pastor does it once in a while, but, but I'm talking the whole atmosphere is as a club. There's churches that are in clubs. Or, or they were ex-clubs, and now they're churches, but they left it the same. They got a bar and everything in there. And they have church here? How is that being set apart from the world? Amen? And so when I seen this caption, I said, man, that's not walking circumspectly. That's not, that's, that's walking as fools. And he said real good, Paul, don't be as fools. Be as wise. Redeeming the time. Redeem, in other words, changing people's lives because the time is evil. Right. The days that we are in are evil, so we have to redeem them from this time. Amen? Amen. Amen. There's a lot of churches out, a lot of churches. So I, we were talking, I can't remember who I was talking to the other day, but I was talking to somebody and I said that there are Trinitarian Pentecostals. Yeah. Amen? They speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. Praise God. But they don't believe in baptism in Jesus' name. Hmm. Okay, so 99% true, that's still a whole lie. That's still a 100% lie. I don't care how you slice it up. You know, you got to walk circumspectly. And again, this is setting our minds on godliness. Amen, Brother Tim gave me a shirt. It's an ouch, but it's true anyhow. Jesus is the judge. Abortion is murder. Islam is... <laughs> Islam is a lie. Amen. And so it, it's true. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 2. <laughs> Setting our minds on godliness. Colossians 3 2 tells us to keep our minds on heaven. Amen. And not the world. Watch this. Amen. When you have it, Colossians 3 2. Amen. It says this Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth. Amen? How easy is it for us to set our minds on six figures? Amen. I got to make that bottom dollar. Hallelujah. How easy is it for us to say, I need that mini mansion? The kids asked me today, Mr. Rivera, are you rich? I'm like, no. <laughs> no. He goes, well, why don't you want a mini mansion? I said, who? Where's that coming from? I don't want a mini mansion. Why? Because you poor? What? I said, I'm content, man. I said, I got my three girls, my, well, my four girls. I'm good. Man, you should get a mini mansion. I said, a five-year-old, you know, six-year-old kindergarten, whatever that is, six, seven years old. Amen. <laughs> what are you talking about? But again, because he, all he knows is what you know, he's taught and material things are everything. Amen. To, to us, the Bible tells us real good that we need to build our treasures up in heaven, not in right. earth. Right. Earth and vessel, amen? Amen. Matthew 23, 37. I hope I'm not boring you, Gloria. This is how we set our minds on godliness. Because sometimes we got to switch off from carnal mind into the spiritual mind. Paul said something real good about that, did he not? In Romans? I believe he did. Matthew 23, or 22, excuse me, verse 37. Matthew 22, 37. Keeping our minds on our hearts and our soul. Amen. Watch this. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Amen. This is why... Working out our own salvation with fear and trembling is so important. This is why uh, the, the absolute just honor to ask for forgiveness. That's an honor to be able to ask for forgiveness. Think about it. Back in the old days, you sin. They go before the man of God. He talks to God. 
Stone him. Okay, here we go. A amen? It wasn't no, Lord, let me sacrifice myself. Nope. Nope. You die. You're dead. Amen. That, you know, they're, they're carrying the Ark of the Covenant. A brother tripped and touched the Ark. Die. Boom. Because it was said. Don't even touch it. He tripped. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I hope he's in paradise. I hope, I, hope he's, <laughs> I hope the Lord took him from Abraham's bosom. Man. I hope he wasn't in eternal fire. Amen. I think it was an accident. That's what, the, that's what I read anyway. Yeah. Amen. So we got to make sure we love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. You know, the scripture talks about you can't serve two masters because you'll love one and hate the other. Amen. So we can't be straddling the fence. I love you, Jesus. I love you, world. Love you, Jesus. I love you, world. Amen. Scripture tells us real good. If anything, uh, is, if you love the world, then the love of the Father is not in you. Amen. Jesus' love is not in you if we love the world yes. that much. This is why Pastor said it plenty of times. If we miss church when we could be here. We're praying against the success of that service. I believe it. If you're missing church for a dollar, I praise the God for Brother Milton. Uh, I'm sure you don't mind. A few weeks ago, or a few months ago, a couple months ago, uh, when we had the picnic, I believe it was a picnic, he could have he, he could have made some couple bucks, glory, but he said, you know what? I need fellowship with the brethren. And he was there with the brethren. Yeah. I said, that's good. Yeah. Amen wasn't a service, it was a fellowship, but still, he, he felt enough in his heart right. that he needed to be with brethren right. and not make a couple bucks. Oh. Amen? amen? Yeah. Uh, not tooting anybody's horn, amen, but my wife and I, we, we, we went on vacation years back, and we left on a Sunday evening and came back Saturday night, I believe, something like that, afternoon, anyway, it was late, but we were like crazy tired, but we still got here Sunday morning, amen? Because that, that's how much we, we are convicted in a good way, amen, to be in the house of God. Amen. Proverbs 19.8. And, and, and what I'm hoping you're doing is from each scripture, write the next scripture down underneath that. And then you could title it in Ephesians, setting our mind on godliness. Our mind on godliness. You could even abbreviate that. Hallelujah. Proverbs 19.8. Yes, ma'am. Proverbs 19, 8. He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. Yes. He that keepeth understanding shall find good. Mm -hmm. Amen? He that getteth wisdom loveth his own soul. The Bible says, how can you hear without a preacher? So I don't care how many times you read the Bible through and through. That means nothing if you get no understanding. Right. Brother Gino Jennings said something good, real good. He was debating somebody. He goes, understandeth what thou readeth. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> do you understand what you're You could read it, but do you understand what you're reading? Right. Amen. This is why I love the scripture because it's, it's truly the living word of God. Because every time I read it, there's something deeper yeah. and deeper. Yes. Amen. Right. Wow. It's amazing to me. It's, it's just amazing to me. Now watch this. Proverbs 27, 12. Safety and protection of, uh, against pleasure. Watch this. Proverbs 27, 12. Watch this. A prudent man foreseeth evil. Amen? Foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. In other words, if our mind is not set on godliness, we'll walk right into the enemy's trap. Amen. You know, like these knucklehead raccoons. They're very smart, amen. They are very smart. But you put a cage in there with some little bait, they're going right in there. <laughs> I don't care how smart they are. They can open doors and do all this stuff and say hello to people and all this stuff. But they're, they're pretty dumb when it comes to that. They go right into the trap. But this is what we are. This is what we are at times because our mind is set on everything else but godliness. Right. And so when the trap of the enemy is right there, boom, it's too late. It says that the simple pass on 
onto this punishment. Amen? We're on, we, we, we get punished because uh, we didn't hearken to the man of God. I'm big on this. I will not, I refuse to go through stuff that anybody else went through when I know you went through it. Isn't that dumb? You tell me about a trial you went through and I go right through it? That's dumb. <laughs> Somebody's dumb. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not going to go through something you went through and you told me about it and you told me how you got through it. That'll be dumb. Amen. That, that's, that's insanity, is it not? That's, that's, that's insanity. Trying, try, trying to get a different result by doing the same thing. That's pretty dumb. That's insanity. Right? I don't want no part of it. So, you know, so if, if I read on Brother David, Amen. <laughs> if I read on Brother David and he was looking at a, a chickadee that was not his, you know, and, uh, you know, he had the man killed and all this here and he should have died. And, hmm. I probably shouldn't look at another man's wife. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> I probably shouldn't do that. Amen. If I see Moses and I, and I, and I see in Scripture where the Lord says, Smack the smoke the rock once, but he did it twice. Bing bing, and now he couldn't enter into the the place that God promised. Then I'm not gonna do that. When the Lord tells me to do something, I'm gonna keep my mind on him and I'm gonna do exactly what he says. Amen. Oh glory. Hallelujah. That's dumb. We do it any other way. Amen. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 1.8. So again, I hope you every, every verse, you just put the next one next to it. And so this way you'll have 15 scriptures on how to set our minds on godliness. Because at the end of the day, my beautiful brethren, we have to get wisdom, and then we get that knowledge, and then we keep that knowledge. Amen? My, my people perish through lack of knowledge. But the church, the apostolic road, will not perish through lack of knowledge because we're getting it up. Amen. Ecclesiastes 1.18. Watch this. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. Now, bless God. Hallelujah. Wait a minute. So you mean the smarter I get in Jesus, the tougher it's going to be? Yes. Jesus says, hey, check this out, everybody. Uh, you shall be persecuted for my name's sake. <laughs> so, so if you haven't, you're going to. Amen? Amen. That's, that's the scripture. Hey. But again, if, if, when I read scripture, we got to be instant. We have to be ready. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. For in much wisdom is much grief. Because people are not going to like us. People are not going to want to hear what we have to say. People are not going to want our minds. Amen? I've talked to plenty. And the pastor said, I think, a couple weeks ago that I talked to a, I don't like calling him pastor because that is a, a holy office, but uh, we'll say a leader. A leader of a group of people. And uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to be nice. You know. And, and, uh, and I, was, I was conversing with him about scripture and he was trying to put titles on me. I said, I'm not a modalist. You know, I'm, I'm not a, 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 a they call it a sub sabellianism. I'm, I'm not that. I am in holiness. Amen? Yeah. Be ye holy for I am holy. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Um, yes, in the book of uh, Acts, they were called Christians first at Antioch. Praise God. Okay, you call me a Christian, but to be a Christian means that you are a follower, a worshiper, a submitter to Christ. Amen? That's what Christian means. So if that's what you're calling me, yes. But don't put me under the umbrella of Christian, the same umbrella that has Trinitarian and Binitarian and Unitarian and Catholic and Mormon. And look, No, not at all. There is a differentiation. Absolutely. And we're not a denomination because we have to have our mind on godliness, holiness. Amen. So, so because of that, because I'm trying to, uh, you know, share my wisdom, it brought grief because right away there was a door closed. Boom. 
I talked to a, a gentleman years ago at my nephew's uh, school, something or other, and he was a Lutheran, I, I believe, leader. And, uh, and I was speaking to him about baptism. I said, hey, uh, I, I, I played the part, Glory. I said, hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, I was thinking about getting baptized, but I don't see a baptism. He goes, oh, oh, it's right there. I said, where? I don't see it. Oh, it's right there. It was a bucket. I like it, like a little, <laughs> yeah. one, one, one of the ones you have, sister. How little, little, little nozzle. I'm like, how am I supposed to fit in there? Oh, 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 oh. oh we, just, we just sprinkle it on you like this here. I said, but baptism means, yeah. I said, I'm a flower? Man, that's interesting. I said, so bautizo in, in the Greek means to submerge, you know. Oh, well, you know, you know yeah, yeah. No, that, was, that, was, that was for them. I said, that was for them. I said, so, how, so do you invoke the name Jesus? Do you call on the name Jesus? Oh, no, no, we do what Jesus said. I said, well, Jesus said, do what I say. He didn't say, repeat what I said. So the book of Acts is correct. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah, I got to go. I have a dentist appointment. I said, well, you might be late because, you, you know, you got to convert me. You got to make me believe this. And I said, why don't you give me a book? Why don't you give me a study? Oh, well, there's a book on LDS. Where I said, no, 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 no. That's bias. He got very offended. Again, our wisdom will bring grief to us. I wasn't trying to be combative. I wasn't trying to, you know, debate the brother. I'm just, hey, you're practicing something. You should be able to back it up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Amen. If we set our mind on God, we don't need to know everything else, but we know God, we know truth, and everything else that is false, we'll see and, and feel immediately. Right. Amen? 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 Don't come talking this Islam to me. Don't come talking this, uh, you know, we are God's thing, that we have to be, you know, uh, spoke over and, and, and go into a temple and all this, and now we become, stop it. Oh, my God. You know, 144,000 of us only going to go, Jehovah Witnesses say. Only 144,000, but there's millions of Jehovah Witnesses. A lot of them going to hell then. If only 144,000 are making it. Jeez, but again, if you know wisdom, scriptures, Isaiah says that the, that the first house and the second house, or the, 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 the first and the latter house. Oh, my God. But they, they overpassed. It was a, it was a, it was a uh, what do they call it, oversight. Hallelujah. Anyways, I'm sorry. I got to keep going. Proverbs 27, 17. We should all know this one anyways. Proverbs 7, 27, 17 says, Iron sharpeneth iron. So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. If I am your friend and you're doing something wrong, it is right for me to tell you. Right. Amen? Because if my mind is set on godliness, God says, watch this now, if you obey your father... How much more should you obey the father of spirits? If you obey your fleshly father, how much more should you obey the creator of your flesh and spirit? Amen? The root of existence. I want to listen to that. Amen? We are made after his image. We are made after his likeness. And so if... If our God, not if, but since our God Almighty came down in flesh and did not sin, tempted at all points. So no one can say, God doesn't know. Yes, he does know. Yes, he, does. he came down in this flesh. Even if he didn't do that, he already knew. Because he created our minds. Right. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The beautiful thing is this. This is what the Lord gave me the other day, too. And, and I had it. I, I, it's just here because it was so powerful. He said like this to me. He says, even though some will not follow my will, my will will continue. I said, wow. And because it goes back to scripture. If you don't worship him, then rocks will worship him. In other words, if we miss out on that blessing, he's not, the, the will of God is not going to stop and wait for us. Come on, Elder T. Come on, Brother Milton. Come on, Elder Brock. Nope, he's gone. He's... Amen? This is why the scriptures in, in Ezekiel are so, wow, powerful when it speaks about the will within the will, the glory of God. The Bible said that it, it, went, it, it moved four times. Every time it will move, it moved further away from the people of God. It was in the tabernacle, spinning. The Bible said it didn't have to turn at all because it was a will going this way, a will going this way. Amen? And when the glory shifted, shoo, immediately, 
Oh my God, I feel his presence. Amen? So he was in the tabernacle. And when the people of God fell away from God, it went outside the tabernacle. And when it went from there, they got further away. It went to the top of Mount Olives. Boom, it was there. And then once it moved from there, because they got further and further and deeper and deeper into their own mess, their own minds, it went back into glory. Ooh, hallelujah. Ain't that something? Sunday, the glory, the anointing of God, that will within the will was here in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Because our minds were set on godliness. Our minds were set on one mind and one accord that our sister would be healed. That my mother would be healed. Oh, hallelujah. That my beautiful queen would be healed and touched by the glory. And my, myself. Amen. Everybody that got prayed for. Amen. I want to set my affections on him always and forever. Amen. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. Right next to Proverbs 27, 17, put James 3, 13. James 3, 13. James was an awesome man. Awesome man. He uh, pastored the biggest church. Amen. Biggest church in Jerusalem. Amen. So he had a lot to deal with, glory. But James 3, 13 says like this. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Amen? Amen. So, so look at that. A meek individual filled with wisdom does not have to go around and say, Brother Alex, I am filled with wisdom, brother. <laughs> Check out my meekness. But I'd be like, brother, that's, that huge, that's pride if I ever smelt it, boy. Get out of my face. You know? <laughs> that ain't meek, boy. You frying up some pride, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Is there anyone among you in due with knowledge? And then is let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Amen. I don't have to sit there and tell everybody, hey, check this out. You know, I'm, I went through six, eight, nine years of school, hallelujah. And uh, I'm very educated, Amen. I make X amount a year, glory. Oh, I know the Bible, hallelujah. What in the world? Everybody be like, what? In the Get out of my face. But how I live and how our conversations go. The kids in Freeport knew immediately. They're like, Mr. Rivera. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. How come you don't swear? Uh, because the Bible tells me that I got to keep my conversation holy and pure and acceptable before God. And they walk away. You know, because they, they, they weren't expecting that answer. They were, they were expecting because the other teachers would say, oh, because I can't swear in school. You know, but then you had other teachers that blankety, blank, 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 you dumb blankety blanks. Amen. So, so they notice it. So if kids notice it, you know, adults are noticing it too. Amen. I know on our, on our, at our jobs, amen, if, especially if we were converted, hallelujah, while adults already, amen. Peter, Elder Piper, great example. Amen. He was one way before he got saved, and now he's 100% different. 180 degree turn. Amen. Amen. Brother Milton, same thing. Boom. Brother Alex, I can imagine the same thing, glory. Boom. Something different about these brethren. Amen. Evangelist King, I'm sure same thing. Hallelujah. So, so we have to make sure that, that when, when, we speak, when we're speaking to people, the mind of God, because the Bible says, put on the mind of Christ. Put off the old man. Put on the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Next to James 3.13, go to Matthew 7.24. My love. Am I okay? Yeah? Left or? Oh, wow. Okay. I'll try to talk fast. Hallelujah. I hope it's making sense. It's Bible study. So I want you to have enough knowledge that you could be like, what did Elder T say? Oh, yeah, he's right here. Bam. Amen? Right. Knowledge. You're not going to perish. Hallelujah. Not in this house. Hallelujah. Jesus. Matthew 7, 24 says like this. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, watch this, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Amen. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine 
and doeth them, I will like, liken him unto a wise man. When we, when we obey, amen, and abide by the commandments, statutes, precepts of our God Almighty, by way of hearing our pastor speak, or any of the elders or ministers or evangelists, or even ourselves. Amen. Side commercial break. In the day of Pentecost, notice something. That the men of God preached, Peter preached the message. Wonderful message. And, and the peace, salute. Lord bless you. Jesus, Jesus bless you. Do all things in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus bless you. Uh, and, and after the message was spoken, the people says, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said what he said, amen, repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. When you read on, it says that they put everything they had, put it together and distributed it to the brethren, and they went praying, paraphrasing of course, but go ahead and read scripture. They prayed one for another, and they were constantly in fellowship. So what that tells me is this. <clears throat> There's no such thing as a Christian superstar. Amen? Sometimes we put the Billy Grahams up here and the Benny Hins, you know, people in the world. You know, oh, my God, they're so holy. No, no, no. Nope. In Scripture, brethren went to brethren, laid hands. Boom. Amen? You notice Philip did a great thing to the eunuch. He prayed, and the, and the Lord translated him. Amen? Yeah. Philip wasn't an apostle. Oh, no. He was anointed to wait on tables. To wait on tables. He was a servant just like you. Just like me. Amen? Amen. So, side commercial break. Hallelujah. Let's go back to scripture. He'll liken us to wise men if we listen to his sayings and we do them. Yes. Right next to that, right? Romans 1.20. Amen. I hope I'm not boring nobody. Romans 1.20. It says, everybody got it? Amen. Amen. Romans 1.20. It says like this. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Wow. I got to read that again. We could, we could last the whole hour here, but I, you know, I'll be fast. For the invisible things of him from creation of the world are clearly seen. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. He's speaking to a saved people. He spe it's like me speaking to you. Amen? We know the truth. Roman, the Romans knew the truth. Paul was not preaching to sinners. He was preaching to people that knew the truth. So when he said here, so that they are without excuse... He said, you know, you know the invisible things of creation because you clearly see them. How can they clearly see the invisible things of creation? Because we got the same mind. Amen. This is why Jesus said when he was asked, Lord, why do you talk to them in parables? He says, because they will only understand that way. He goes, but you, you hold the mystery of the truth. So I can speak to you in a deeper way. Amen. If we know the mystery of the truth is because the Bible says, you can't even call him Lord except by the Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Does it not say that? Yeah. So we can't even call Jesus Lord unless we have his Spirit because then we can have that connection. Then we understand, wow, he is the manifestation of God. Wow, he is God manifested in the flesh. That's why first, just said Corinthians 2, 2, 5.19, it says, To wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Oh, my God. To wit, that God. Isn't that wonderful? What God? That God of old. The God of creation. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Oh, anyways. I got to stay on track. But it says, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. We understand that because we have his spirit. If we, if we, don't, if we haven't spoken tongues... Uh, keep tarrying for it. Amen. Keep tarrying for it. He'll give it because it's a gift. This is what's beautiful. It's a gift. He's going to give it to us when we're ready to use it. Because with a gift, 
Sometimes, we, we, you know, we get a gift and we'll just put it up and forget about it. He wants us to be ready so that when we open this gift up and he gives it to us, we're ready to use it. Amen? Amen. Why get a gift and put it up on the shelf? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right next to there, put Romans 12, 3. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't know what number of scripture this is. I think it's 11. Amen. All right, good. We're good. Four more. After Romans 12, 3. And I'm going to give you two more bonus scriptures at the end. Hallelujah. Bonus. Romans 12, 3 says like this. For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. Let's, let's read that again and break it down real sharp. For I say, Paul is saying this, through the grace given unto me. Grace is a merited favor. Amen. Amen. We don't deserve it. Right. We have favor of God even though we were sinners and he still yet died for us. Right. Amen. Amen. Not God, but you know, his flesh. Right. God cannot die. Right? God cannot pray, by the way, because he, you know, who would he pray to, right? right. Amen. So this is, this is why it's, it's an example when Jesus prayed in Gethsemane. And he prayed and all this. That's why the Lord's Prayer, there's no such thing as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. God don't trespass. Did Jesus fall? Did he sin at any time? No. So it was no Lord's Prayer. Let's get that out of our minds. Hallelujah. It was an example how to pray. Amen. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. No. Jesus didn't trespass. That's for us. C commercial break. Amen. Now, to every man that is among you, right? Not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Just because I have an, a, a title that I've been blessed with from on high, elder as well, assistant pastors to our great pastor. So I'll be her, hallelujah. You could be Aaron. <laughs> Or Joshua, I'm sorry, Joshua. Amen? That's fine. Wonderful. But, but this, it's, it's, it's an honor. Elder knows. It's an honor. El, Elder, Elder Brock knows. Evangelist, my beautiful queen evangelist. I can't say evangelist queen, but evangelist <laughs> Melissa, amen. Amen. <laughs> evangelist Kang, evangelist Free, amen. <laughs> Mr. Carlos, amen. It's an honor, absolute honor. But just because we have a beautiful, honorable title before our name doesn't mean we ought to think ourselves more highly than you. Amen. Glory to the name. The Bible says, lift up your hands, all ye gates. So that means we are all gates. We are all here in the same plain field. Hallelujah. Arm in arm. Not uh, pastor on our shoulders and elder on his shoulders. <laughs> no. We are arm in arm. Amen. We all get hallelujah, Jesus. Absolutely. Example. Absolutely. And as, as an example, because even, even God manifested in flesh. Put himself down here. He could have made himself real pretty. He could have been the most beautiful man alive. But he said he made himself as a common man. Amen. I'm sure he had some nice, good muscles, but he wasn't too ripped. Because then they'd be looking at him real strange. Real, hey, who's this guy? This guy's real ripped. <laughs> Plain, amen? Plain. Strong, but, you know, not too crazy, amen? Because he wanted to be that example. Everything Jesus did was to, to, to be, give us an example. When he prayed in Gethsemane, he prayed to the point where he sweat blood. That was because the such such intensity of his prayer. That's how we need to pray. How are we gonna sit there and pray? Oh, Father, uh, Jesus' name. Uh, go ahead and bless, uh, you know, Sister Lisa, and go ahead and bless uh, uh, Brother. May. Amen. I gotta go to sleep. That's not intense. You don't mean that. Right. Right. Amen. That's 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 that's. I mean, you might as well not say anything at all. Got to hearing that. He needs us to pray from our heart right. and have. The mind of God. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. 
Let's finish up the scripture. But to think soberly. In other words, think yourself as nothing. We, you know what? The Bible says in Galatians, he says, uh, you know, carry on one another's burden. He said that, right? And then he says, for, well, first he says, carry your own burden, right? Then a couple verses later, he says, carry your brother and sister's burden. Amen? I mean, that's what we ought to do. But if I think myself more highly than you, then my trial is bigger than yours. Therefore, I'm always going through a thing. And you wouldn't understand, sisters. Brothers, you wouldn't understand. You wouldn't understand because my trial is bigger than yours. Amen? My giant, even though if you look at it from your lens, my giant's this big. But again, it's my giant. So I got to carry that, but at the same time, I got to carry my sisters and brothers as well. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Amen. According to as God dealt every man the measure of faith. He gave, he gave us all faith. And uh, he says that, uh, you know, we can move mountains with that faith. And we all have a measure of faith. And even those that say, oh, I don't have enough faith. Um, have you ever told anybody, I'll see you tomorrow? We've all said that. That's, that's mega faith. Right? Because you, you know that you know you're going to wake up tomorrow. At least you think you know. Amen. That's faith. Amen? That's why the Bible says real good, uh, God willing. Amen? That's what it says, God willing. Because what if the Lord Almighty wants to take us home? Amen? Hey, I'll see you tomorrow. God takes us home. Oh, man, I just lied to my brother and sister. Put me back, Lord. Let me tell them I'm sorry. Amen? Right next to that one, put Proverbs 17, 28. We got to speak this into our lives. Amen? We got to set our minds on godliness. Oh, glory. Amen. Watch this. Proverbs 17, 28. It says, even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he, sh he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. In other words, even a fool can look very smart. I've seen this plenty of times. Elder Brock, Elder Brock and I, uh, you know, we have, we have the awesome privilege and honor, honor to, to work with each other, work, work, work with each other, excuse me. Uh, we don't see each other all day, but, you know, here and there we're able to see each other in, in the same building. Praise God. Two Holy Ghost filled brothers in the same building. Amen. It's awesome. Amen. It's wonderful. And uh, during, right before kids started coming, we had a speaker come, and he actually knew him, uh, my wife as well. They had him in, at Jefferson, a uh, um, history teacher, I believe. And um, the, the dude was smart fella. Like, he, he, he dressed well. You know, he, he, he looked okay. And he started talking. He was like, wow, he's pretty good. And then he started saying some things. I'm like, oh, that boy's dumb. <laughs> that boy's dumb. <laughs> I mean, I'm just calling it like it is. Amen. Because, he, he, you know, when he was talking things that he knew, you know, education and academic-wise, man, smart. Wow. Very intellectual. But then he started getting to this whole nother thing about race and this, that, and the other. And I was like, this, brothers, duh. Wow. Like, I had to give it that extra couple of U's. Duh. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. My God. Brother, you were smart two seconds ago. Now you just dumb. You just flipped to the other side. Because, again, even a fool, when they hold their peace, is counted wise. Pastor says all the time, even stupid people could be, dumb, uh, could be smart. But he said, everybody's smart until they open their mouth. That's what you say. Yep. Everybody's smart until they open their mouth. Yeah. And then you understand, oh, yeah. Okay. They, need, they do. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, man. The Bible says brutish, right? We, I think I talked about this one. Brutish. That means dumb. I'll stay, I'll stay brutish. Right next to Proverbs 17, 28, right now, Proverbs 3, 13. Got a few more. And we got some bonus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Proverbs 3.13 says like this. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Solomon asked. The Lord said, go ahead, ask whatever you want. He said, give me wisdom. And the Lord was so honored by that. He says, not only am I give you wisdom and understanding, but I'm going to give you everything else. Amen? Amen? Everything else. And people were coming from different parts of the world to talk to him and trying to trick him up, trip him up. And he gave him still a wise word. And man, truly you are the wisest man in this world. 
Amen. Because we ask for wisdom. And this is what we ought to do. This is why we have to come to the house of God. This is why we have to be at every service. Amen. What, I, what I've done in my personal walk, so I hope this could help somebody at least. What I've always done, when I didn't want to do something, uh, when it had to do with, with, with church, I would make myself do it, and I would be blessed by it. Amen. Amen? I'm not talking the Lord just rains down money on me or, you know, I get this, that. No, I'm not talking about that, but I, my spirit was blessed by it. Amen? Amen? There was a couple of times, um, you know, the choir came and everybody, come on, LG. No, I don't want to. But right when I said I didn't want to, I'm like, man, now I got to do it. <laughs> and I would do it, and praise God, I, I was blessed by it. I mean, it, it dissolved glory, but, you know. <laughs> and I still did it. I still did it. <laughs> Amen. So, that's, that, again, there's sometimes Saturdays come around. I really don't want to go all the way to Chicago. I'll be honest with you. I'll really be honest with you. Amen. But I do it because I know my spirit needs it. This flesh, imagine, this flesh gets no glory. So I'm going to be home. I'm going to be having fun. But the whole time, my mind will be set on the service that I should have been at. Amen? Because my conviction tells me I ought to go to the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Next to Proverbs 3.13, go to go 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2. 1 Corinthians 2.2. 2. This is number 14. Yes? Holy Lord Jesus. All right, I'm going to talk real fast, real fast, real fast, real fast. Say amen when you have it. Amen. amen. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. So I don't care what anybody else has to say in this world. If they're not talking Jesus crucified, if they're not talking Jesus, the one true God, if they're not talking Jesus baptism, Hallelujah. And Jesus' spirit indwelt in us. I don't want to hear it. Amen. Amen. He says, if I determine to, know, to not know anything among you, I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your ethnicity is. I don't care what your culture tells you you ought to believe. I care about Jesus crucified alone. That's it. Point blank period. You know, don't come to me talking another Jesus. Uh, Cause we'll cut you up, we'll make you lick it up, lick it up. We'll mop you up real good. Cause there's Bar Jesus, there's uh, Jesus Bar Jonah, Amen. Joshua, another another rendering of that. O'Shea, that's another rendering of Jesus. There's a lot of those. Matter of fact, there's a Jesus in school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my uncle was Jesus. Glory. There's a lot of Jesus, but there's only one Jesus Christ. That died for our sins. Amen. Anyways, right next to 1 Corinthians 2 2, write Proverbs 15 5. Watch this. Proverbs 15 5. This is number 15. And then I'll give you the two bonus ones in a second. A fool, amen. Say amen. We have it. Proverbs 15 5. A fool despiseth his father's instruction, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Amen. When our mind is set on godliness and the man of God comes to us with some reproof, some correction, maybe at times some rebuke, a prudent man, a prudent man is going to take it. A prudent man is going to be, Lord Jesus, uh, thank you, Pastor. I receive it. Amen? Amen. Because if, I, if you read scripture like I read scripture, the heart of God Almighty is in this man. He has given pastors after his own heart. Amen. So that tells me when I read it real good, the heartbeat of Jesus is in our pastor. Amen. The mind of Christ might be in us, but the heart of Jesus is in the man of God. This is why we have to give him a double honor. Amen. This is why when I asked a couple years back, I think there's 12 people that said they will pray for pastor every day. I wish I could, I wish I could find that video on YouTube in Jesus' name and see who said they would, and I'm going to ask them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean it. Man, you know, when Moses was praying and he was, the Bible says that he was praying and he was getting weary and his arms started falling. What happened? The people of God started losing the battle. Right. And it wasn't until the brethren lifted up his hands. In other words, lifted up his spirits and lifted up his strength. Amen. And made sure that the outflow 
was greater than the inflow. Wasn't greater than the inflow, excuse me. Because the inflow of his spirit has to be greater than what you're giving out. Because if you're giving out so much, you're going to get weary. Very. How many times have we got out of church and we just felt drained? You just want to go to sleep, eat something, go to sleep. Right? Because we just outpoured so much of us. Amen. We gave Jesus so much, amen, that our flesh is drawn down. Our gas pedal is gone. Amen. We were, we were on it all service. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, closing scriptures. This is the last two. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And then I'll shut up. It says like this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Watch this. Which is your reasonable service. When the Bible says present your bodies a living sacrifice, Sister Anita, praise God, couldn't come to church at times because of her knee. Amen? And, and Sunday, I'm sure there was some, some residual pain there, amen? And she got up and her body, though her body probably like, I don't know if this is going to do it. But because she presented her body a living sacrifice. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Living sacrifice. That's why the Lord was able to show out. Amen? Because even though we're in pain, we got to show out. Lord, Lord I, I believe you in Jesus' name. In Jesus', in Jesus name. Amen. Amen? You got to speak this into existence. And not only speak it, but you got to act on it. Amen? I'll never forget the day when Sister Michelle, I think you were on this side over here. Amen? And I, oh no, you're this side. And I remember saying that the Lord has made you whole because of your faith. I remember I was up, oh glory, I remember. And it's right out of scripture, but the Lord gave it to me for you that day. Oh, hallelujah. But again, there's sometimes we have to make sure when we're doing something and we're asking the Lord for something, we have to make sure that our body is a living sacrifice. And the Lord gave me something so beautiful about this couple of couple months or maybe last year that if the blemish on the sheep couldn't even be amen the, 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 the sacrifice that they gave in the days old it couldn't have no blemish it had to be perfect and pure to sacrifice and the Lord gave me this then how much blemish should we have oh my God if we create if we present ourselves a living sacrifice that means every blemish has to be gone amen this is why when we ask for the Holy Ghost, when we ask for the Holy Ghost, or when we ask for the Lord to bless us with something, if there's a blemish in our life, if there's something in us that we have not gotten rid of, He says, "You better present yourself a living sacrifice, because no longer do we have to die in order for the Lord to bless us." He said, "Present yourself a living sacrifice." Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. So I believe without a doubt that the Lord will and can bless us beyond measure if we present ourselves a living. Lord, I give you my mind. Lord, I give you my heart. Lord, I give you my soul. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. That's when the Lord will bless us. When we present ourselves a living sacrifice. Holy. Set our minds on godliness. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because the will of God does not wait for you or me. The will of God continues on. So he says, if you want to stay on this will train, hallelujah, on this glory train, on this I'm going to bless you train, then he said, present yourselves a living sacrifice and be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. Pray my strength in the Lord.